YouTube has been the center for a lot of controversy over the years, one of the most famous ones being Elsagate. Elsagate is the name given to a bunch of disturbing and inappropriate videos being targeted towards children. These videos were incredibly bizarre, and they mostly featured grown adults in kid character costumes, mostly Elsa and Spider-Man. They also used a bunch of cartoons that were very, very cheaply made, probably in overseas sweatshops. The fact that they featured these characters at all was a very calculated decision. At the time, the most popular characters for girls was Elsa, and for boys, Spider-Man. Obviously, the name Elsagate is a play on the Watergate conspiracy. The videos that fall under this Elsagate moniker were very, very strange, and often disturbing and bizarre. A lot of them had heavy themes of needles, pregnancy, feces, and violence. The thumbnails were always bright and catchy while displaying whatever disgusting theme was in the video. Many of the more very poorly animated ones were turned out incredibly quickly. They featured primarily Mickey Mouse, and were incredibly inappropriate, and often directly violent. There are a multitude of reasons as to why these videos contain the content that they did which we will dive into later. Strangely enough, during the height of Elsagate, there were also a lot of these very well-made stop-motion videos, but they weren't innocent either. They also dealt with these disturbing and bizarre themes featuring these famous kid characters. But a lot of these claymation stop-motion videos would clearly take a long time to make and were very well animated by people who had experience with stop motion, yet they were still made with these disturbing and inappropriate themes. It's one thing when it's a content farm of a bunch of terrible flash animation. That's something, it's easy to make, it's easy to create, people in live action suits is easy too, but stop motion animation is so much more difficult and takes so much more time, yet they still decided to take the dark side and make everything disturbing and just messed up. Once word of these videos spread to the mainstream media, there was widespread outrage. YouTube luckily took action and banned hundreds of channels hosting this content while also being more strict with videos using kids, alongside unlicensed characters. This effectively killed this type of content for a little while. However, unfortunately, they have made a return. So, today we will delve into and expose the disgusting return of Elsagate. Children in 2023 are obsessed with few very prominent internet characters, slash games. If you spend a lot of time on the internet or around children, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Friday Night Funkin', Poppy Playtime, Squid Game, these are franchises that are being exploited by some troubled individuals in the YouTube Kids community. The majority of these videos are being done with cheap animation, not unlike the first wave of these videos. Only now, they feature online characters rather than the movie characters of Spider-Man and Elsa. Another very prominent one at the time was Peppa Pig. She still gets used quite a lot though. This rabbit hole runs deep. And I want to warn people who are watching now that it gets disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. If you really want to learn the truth about these things, then you're in the right place. Whenever something gets big on the internet, children's content creators often will take over and start making a bunch of really awful content about it. And I'm not even talking the disturbing stuff, just the cheap, bland, useless, nothing content. I talked about this at length in my Backrooms video, and it's really the same thing here. When something's popular, like Among Us, Squid Game, Poppy Playtime, all of it will just get taken over, and these soulless content creators will milk it until it's dry, for every dollar that it's worth. There's no creative integrity here, there's nothing educational, it is purely, purely just greed. However, what about when something isn't kid-friendly that blows up? What happens then? Well, unfortunately, we've seen that these creators don't give a shit and will make videos on it anyway. Let me introduce you all to Anka the Zone. Zone or Zontan is an animator who makes Rule 34 parodies of cartoons. For those who don't know, Rule 34 is the 34th rule of the internet. If it exists, there's no horn of it. Zone's been at it for a long time, corrupting all these different shows. A big example of this being the Teenage Robot parody, which, which people are unfortunately more familiar with than the original show, which is just really f***ed up. Zone was more popular back in the early 2010s, but made a return in 2021 with their video on the Animal Crossing character Anka. Anka is like a little Egyptian pharaoh cat creature, and their video shows her having intercourse along to a song with one of the villager characters. It's gross, it's, it's a parody of something that should be innocent, but there's worse things on the internet. 
This is very clearly made for adults, not for children. And whether or not it should exist is debatable, but it does. However, it should have stayed for adults. It became a meme. People basically cropped the top of the picture and cut out the graphic elements of it to make it look like the cat was just dancing to the rhythm. This blew up, knowing the context, haha, it's inappropriate, but now we're like sneaking it in. Really funny. The internet is hilarious. Since this blew up and was profitable to make videos on, some YouTubers took it and started making kids content out of it. Immediately, this caused outrage among the people who saw it, who were older and recognized the context. I don't even think I need to explain to you why this is just messed up and, and wrong on every level. It spread to TikTok, where children, like 12 year olds, were remaking the dance. While all these channels who spread it just served to profit more and more and more. It's another just truly disgusting example of what money does to people. The complete lack of respect and morals that comes into this is just awful, and it's hard to believe that it even happened at all. That's the very internet that we're on. Now, at least to me, this example doesn't really seem like the people making the content were trying to groom anyone, or it was made with the same really disturbing intents that other videos may have been in the Elsagate subgenre. To me, it seems more like just stupid YouTubers seeing that something's popular and making videos for their child audiences, and not really recognizing the effects that they may have and the kind of content that they're leading them towards. At least, that's what helps me sleep at night. One of the older Elsagate channels of the time was a very bizarre one that just basically reused the same animation with different 3D models every video with what sounded like a Japanese man singing Five Little Monkeys jumping on the bed. Now this ranged anywhere from Shrek to Kanye West's idol. Jumping on this bed, falling off, bumping their head, you know the deal. However, some of these designs ended up becoming really either scary or just inappropriate. It just was truly content farm bullshit. Now, similar videos are being done, only instead of the characters that are popular then, it's that are popular now. This guy is called Huggy Wuggy, and he comes from the series of not-so-good horror games, Poppy Playtime. I don't like him, and I don't like his games. But children really, really do. And this is just another example of YouTubers capitalizing on the interests of children, making a ton of money off of it, and not caring what the actual content is like. So now, instead of Spider-Man and Elsa, you're gonna see Huggy Wuggy everywhere. Be prepared. Now, he is made to be scary, but like, this is made to be scary for kids. It very clearly is made for kids. It's the same, what I like to call the FNAF effect, where it's like, call the horror game, but it's not scary to the point where it's actually scary, where it's just like, it just ends up giving you a jump scare, it's a little spooky, a kid would be fine. They might get freaked out by it, but it's not gonna do any, like, psychological damage. The exploitative nature of Poppy Playtime is a topic for another video. Something that used to happen a lot in Elsagate and is still happening now is a very, very strange emphasis on pregnancy, both for comedic, horrific, and story reasons. It's weird. It's really weird. Many people are completely confused as to why these themes are in here. For example, you'll be seeing pregnancy mods of Friday Night Funkin', or videos where the, the Poppy Playtime spider is pregnant, or something like that. And it's just weird. People have often wondered why this is such a theme. Are children just inherently interested in pregnancy? Or is it something more sinister? Well, let's look at what else they use. Often, there's just out of nowhere shots of blood and human waste in lots of these videos. If you've been on the internet long enough, you know that this is not a coincidence, this isn't just some random thing that seemed to find funny. No, it's, it's fetish content. People can make their own weird fetish videos for whatever they want and enjoy them on their own time as adults doing their own weird ass things. I've got nothing to say about it. But when you start putting them on YouTube kids and advertising them to children, that's where there's a problem. And this is where a lot of people think that this becomes a grooming ring. It is believed by some that this whole Elsagate effect is made by a couple sick individuals who want to groom children and normalize all these different disgusting things. So that's just okay in the mind of the child, or they're just used to it, or even in some examples which have actually happened. The person who viewed these things as a kid then adapts those fetishes. And then at the end of the day, these sick individuals have more people that they've now basically converted into enjoying these very unsanitary things. <sighs> YouTube used to allow comments on children's videos. However, after being sued over Elsagate, they've actually completely removed the option. If your video is set for kids or even features kids at all and isn't for kids, comments will not be allowed. However, Many of these videos aren't set as for kids. In fact, they're completely just set as for adults, and there's nothing around the videos that says they're for kids. 
even though they're clearly marketed towards children. Now, is this to protect children? Why was this decision made to get rid of comments? Let me warn you, it's disturbing. A few years back, there was essentially a ring of predators who would share videos just uploaded by children who were making their own videos. Like, every kid wants to be a YouTuber, every kid has a YouTube channel where they just upload content that they hope will make big, but it's just a child talking to a camera. A lot of these times when these videos were face cams, and especially featuring young girls, these people would find them and share them within their communities. And a lot of the comments were incredibly disturbing. They weren't even hiding their intentions. When it comes to content like this, YouTube decided to completely remove the option to comment, so people couldn't share links within these comments, which they were doing, and these comments couldn't be seen. You also couldn't add children's videos onto a playlist, so they couldn't compile them on a playlist like they were doing before. Another thing that was a whole part of this entire thing was the very strange and almost cryptic comments that were left on these Elsa Gate videos. Now, there are two explanations for these. One being the more Occam's Razor effect, is that it was children who didn't know how to type, would go in the comment section, smash their keyboard a bit, accidentally post a comment, and that's why there was so much weird gibberish in the comments. Makes sense. However, when decoded, some of the text appeared to be code. And there was one time that was documented, or when putting said code into Google, it would lead to a video of a little girl twerking. This led a lot of people to believe that these comments were not just gibberish, and that they all had secret meanings, and they were basically codes for people to go out of their way and find CP. People believe that it's all just some sort of sick game to these people, like they're right out there in the open and that's how they get their sick kicks about it. They don't even have to hide it. So this is no longer an option, right? On videos that are featured and made for kids and feature kids. But like I said, this leads there to still be a ton of weird videos and playlists of this specific content. People have done experiments in recent time where they start a new YouTube channel or go into an incognito tab and start searching up these different search terms for these weird things and they find so much shit, very quickly. Videos featuring heavy emphasis on feet, farting, feces, and just general, like, outwardly sexual themes, like Minecraft characters, the girls having massive circles on their chests, or there being some videos featuring animals. We still have our very fair share of disturbing stop motions and disturbing animations that are bloody and weird. There's also a channel who features, get this, Friday Night Funkin' mods of Sonic characters, but they're getting Friday Night F***ed in them! I'm not joking! They feature Friday Night Funkin' mods. They're being hit from the back, and it's not even a joke, this is just- this is just on YouTube. They claim to just be meme channels, but it's so obvious what they're doing. I feel awful for the children that have to learn about the birds and the bees in this way, because that cannot be good for you mentally. You'll still find your fair share of channels using Minecraft characters, or doing weird live-action Minecraft videos where they green-screen their hands into the game and then, like, drink pee. It's really just an infinite stream of this absolute dogshit content. They're doing all of this to this day, and people are not talking about it. I'd also like to bring up a channel called Mr. Dweller. Mr. Dweller makes the most bottom-of-the-barrel content ever. Literally, like, just awful in every single way possible. They essentially took the Mr. Incredible meme, which, again, was killed by people oversaturating it and not understanding the original concept of it, and, like, turned him into a baby with huge eyes and super exaggerated features, and in the videos he's, like, constantly moving, and there's not a second where there's something still, there's constantly movement, there's constantly motion and music, and it's just the most content farm disgusting stuff that you can find. Every thumbnail features something disturbing, whether it be some sort of real disease, some gross photoshop, or some genuinely awful content. Looking through the channel, there is so much that's just actually stuff that you don't want to see. I'm gonna blur it, because like, I don't want the viewers watching this to see this, it's genuinely disgusting. But who actually watches these videos, right? It's children, obviously. There's something gross in the thumbnail, a familiar Mr. Incredible baby. It's captivating, it's interesting, the videos are constantly moving so they're not boring. Yeah, it's, it's little children. Because no one else over the age of like, nine years old would watch this. They just wouldn't. The brain would be developed too far to find any of this enjoyable. I don't think Mr. Dweller has some sort of alternate agenda to brainwash children and to normalize them with disgusting content, but I honestly don't really care. The fact that he's still making this content and it's just genuinely disgusting and disturbing, she should still be called out for it. 
because I feel like he perfectly fits into this disgusting Elsa Gate content. Now, luckily, as the point of talking about him in January of 2023, his channel is starting to die. Thank God, he deserves it. His videos are getting about the same amount of views that I have, which, yeah, see how it feels? It sucks. He's got a lot more subscribers than me, but we're getting the same numbers. So far, we've seen videos normalizing disgusting fetishy behavior using cartoon characters to further push this gross stuff with just more and more and more depraved content this content normalizes normal sexual imagery violence blood whatever it is it's making it familiar and it's making it okay for a lot of kids but here's the thing what if we find just actual pearl on YouTube. Well, you can, and the way that you can is incredibly disturbing. I'm sure you're all familiar with the 90s TV show Hey Arnold, right? Critically acclaimed, everyone loved it, all the 90s kids love it. It's a great show. So what if you're a kid and you're learning about this and you want to watch some Hey Arnold and you look up Hey Arnold full episode on YouTube? Well, you'll be greeted by very normal results. You'll get videos from Nickelodeon, videos about the show, just generally normal content. But let's say you want to find a playlist full of full episodes so you can just watch them all. Well, this is where things get disturbing. Upon searching this up, you'll be met with multiple playlists full of, well, full of sexual content with some Hey Arnold episodes sprinkled in. They all share the same description of, we're all gonna die, Hey Arnold, and then a bunch of just search terms to make them show up whenever you look this up. All these playlists are made by Vietnamese channels. The content varies from playlist to playlist, but it's, it's all generally the same thing. One to five second videos, including a sexual gif, and then that's it. That and like odd unboxing slash tech repair videos that are much longer. I don't know why this is the case, but there are a ton of channels showing this. Again, they all have the same exact description. So my question is, what the hell is actually going on here? Why are we seeing this? And who's behind it? There may be some sort of business slash like sweatshop in Vietnam that just either uses bots or actual humans, makes these playlists for content and for money, I can assume, but it's confusing because there doesn't seem to be any monetary value attached to these videos. They're all around one second long and you don't make money from videos like that, especially some that are hidden by looking up a cartoon, going into playlists and then finding these compilations. It kind of genuinely stumps me. This isn't the only strange Vietnam channel that I've found, by the way. This is unrelated and will be featured in a future video, but a few months back I, I got recommended a Family Guy clip on YouTube. This isn't anything new, but the difference was is that the channel's banner and profile picture was straight up hardcore pornography. Like literally, there, there was no censorship, that's exactly what it was. And the channel was a Vietnamese one with a Vietnamese name. Now there are a ton of Family Guy clips that were about the length of a full episode uploaded on this channel. However, if you scroll down a little bit, you'd actually find the videos from the Vietnamese man that owned it prior. He did like wild hunting snake videos, which is its own whole rabbit hole, but isn't really related to this. The video was then taken down, but I thought I should mention that when it comes to these odd Vietnamese channels. A good chunk of the modern Elsa Gate videos are produced in Vietnam. They use names and tags like Hao Ki, that's absolutely not how you say it. I'm sorry for how I pronounce that, but they're there. And this word simply translates to USA in Vietnamese. It is really, really hard nowadays to find an original Elsa Gay video. I'm talking like a live action Spider-Man and Elsa video. I'm sure a couple of them survived the purge, but you'll be hard pressed to find them. But those aren't relevant anymore. What, what kids want is all this new stuff. And they're being flooded and bombarded with it both on YouTube Kids and on normal YouTube. There are a lot of really strange foreign videos that I don't really understand, but they just give me the creeps from their thumbnails alone. I genuinely feel bad for all the kids that are growing up with this stuff. Now, I gotta be clear. Back in my childhood and many of ours, we didn't watch stuff that was much better. I mean, Angry Birds Dancing to Gangnam Style wasn't exactly peak content, but at least it wasn't disturbing videos masquerading as stuff for children. But at least the thing is that a lot of the time with Gen Z kids, the videos that we got scared by were creepy videos made to be creepy, not to be for children. It's a big difference. Back in the older days of Elsagate, when it was first a big thing, many, many of these videos featured actual children. And in some of them, well, the content was genuinely disturbing. 
abuse. There were videos portraying children being injected with different syringes for content, children crying and struggling throughout the entire things. They didn't last long on YouTube, but the fact that they existed at all is just so saddening and so disturbing, and it makes you want to seek vengeance for the children involved. So what is our solution here? What do we do? Well, I want to talk to a few different age groups here. If you're like me and you're a young adult, with no kids, and you stumble across these videos, report them immediately. In fact, report them multiple times. If you're really passionate about it, do it on multiple different accounts. The more channels that they lose, means they lose more money. It becomes less of a profitable endeavor to do these videos. Now they're always gonna pop back up, but if we can find them before they really become big and start being shown to children, we can do a lot of good. Let's make it like a game of whack-a-mole. Find an Elsagate channel, just bash it in the skull. Here's my advice to people who are actual parents, or older siblings of young children who use YouTube. This might sound impossible, and I understand why it would, but my advice would be stop letting your children use YouTube. Completely. Wait till they're at an age where they can more responsibly surf the internet and not be taken advantage of by these YouTubers. The kid will put up a fight, they'll be upset about it, because of course they will. A lot of children are addicted to the internet. If you take away the iPad and take away the laptop, just delete YouTube, delete YouTube kids, and enforce safety controls that don't let them get back on there, you can save your kid a lot of trauma and whatever psychological effects could come from it in the future. Instead, show them old TV shows made for children. Show them new TV shows made for children. Show them the stuff that you grew up with. Because that is made for the child. It's made for a child's brain. It's made to nourish and educate them. Even if it's something silly, it's still not damaging these kids. We still don't know what the effect of children watching this kind of content for hours and hours and hours every single day will do to them mentally when they grow up because they're too young at this point. The toddlers who were watching Elsagate videos back in 2016 slash 2017 are growing up and soon we'll be able to kind of see what happens. I was reading a Reddit thread which was posted by someone asking if anyone had grown up with Elsagate stuff. One of the commenters said they strongly believe it's a reason that they have a urine fetish. Other people in the comments section were agreeing with them, so it worked, at least on a few people. But it's not too late. It's not too late for your kid. It's not too late for your little brother or your little sister. It's not too late for any of us. Take away YouTube. If anything, limit it to just playlists that you make specifically of content that you know is 100% good for your kid to watch. Because if you don't, the effects could be catastrophic. I'm talking purely about Elsagate content, but most YouTube children's content is terrible. Something like Cocomelon, it's bad. It's really bad. But that is a video for another time. We can kill these Elsagate channels if we work hard enough. If we take away their streams of revenue and we report their channels, we can win this battle. And we can ensure the safety and security that our children deserve. This is the next generation. They're gonna be the leaders of our world. They need to have good modeling as they grow up. And together, we can give them that good modeling. I'm trusting everyone watching this to do their part. If you find a channel, report it. I've gotta be 100% honest with everyone watching. That was by far the hardest video that I've ever had to make. The information that I had to process and write about and edit for hours on end and just continuously stare at and make into content was not fun but at the end of the day if at least even one child is spared from seeing this and the information provided in the video goes into good hands and is actually has some use in this world then it makes everything worth it it makes the entire process 100 percent worth it because that's the point of this video this whole topic hits pretty close to home for me uh, i i work with children so i have care for their safety and their brains really their futures, and to see this content so specifically targeting that age group is despicable in so many different ways, and it really, truly upsets me. Which is why we need to wage a war on this shit. We can't let it just stay there. I want you all to join me in our battle against Elsagate and all the content around it. Report the channels, tweet at YouTube, don't let your kids watch it. Let's make a change on this platform for the better, because YouTube is amazing. But. The content that's on here for children is just not okay. And I think we should all see to it that at least some of it gets removed. I genuinely hope the information in this video was useful to you guys because it's information that needs to be known. And I can't be the only one talking about it. If you've got a platform, I invite you, anyone, to start making videos about the same exact topic. Feel free to borrow the topics I talked about. Just the word must be spread. There are only a few videos on YouTube talking about this. And most of them are relatively obscure. It is not enough. 
We need more voices to be heard, and we need to enact actual change. So let's do everything that we can to spread this video as far as it can go. Subscribe to the channel for support, share it with people, like, comment, everything, to really boost its algorithmic appeal. We are the rebellion against Elsagate. We are defending the future. We are defending the youth. And our voices will be heard. I trust that we can win this battle and make YouTube a safer and happier place. Expose these awful content farms for what they are and the completely morally bankrupt nature of all of their content. Together, we've got this. I'll personally do all I can. If you want to see another video on this topic, I'm sure there are a ton of channels that I didn't talk about, topics that I didn't even discover myself in my own research. So if you want to see more, let me know and I will cover it. This video is probably not even going to be monetized in, in all seriousness, so I'm not even doing this for the money. If it is monetized, then, then great. But I'm making this because I want this to be heard. I want this to be known. Together, we can beat them. I've been Raymundo2112. You've been a great audience member, and I'll see you all in the next one.